Okay, Roz, you, you study the mathematics of disease, right? How exactly. much of it is luck and chance? Well, there's a lot of chance that's involved in the transmission of disease. So if there's an epidemic happening at the moment, the chance of you getting it depends on how many other people there are that have the uh, infection at the time. And then if you happen to meet one of those, which is more likely when there's a lot of people um, who have it, there's also a chance you'll get it from them or not. And if you have some pre-existing immunity, maybe you've been vaccinated or you've had it before, then the chance of them passing it to you also goes down. So there's a lot. So then how can maths help you? Mm. It's really difficult to predict on an individual level if somebody will get it. But on a population level with these nice big numbers, there's some things we can predict. When the epidemic will go up and when it will come down, we try and predict the peak and we try and predict which groups might be at risk of infection. Well, talking of epidemics, mm. there are some rumours of a zombie apocalypse about to hit. Um, OK, so everyone here, underneath your seats, you should have a, uh, a zombie mask and you should have some ping pong balls. Now, these, these are your zombie germs. Mm -hmm. So how it works is if a zombie germ touches you, you become a zombie, you put up your zombie mask, and then you take your zombie germs and you throw them straight up in the air as high as you possibly can, okay? And in a moment, I'm gonna start off this infection. So everyone start with your mask down um, to kick us off. Mm. But you can make a prediction about what might happen here. Mm. So over here, nobody has any protection against zombie, zombie infection. So we're gonna expect a lot of cases and possibly quite quickly. Okay, all right, let's give it a go. Is everyone ready? Everyone got their balls in their hand? All right, we're gonna start this infection. Here's the zombie germs coming at you. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> directly targeting people okay oh already so we've got little actually a few different patches here we do yeah but it's starting to get a little bit frightening around here and it's traveling backwards mm -hmm. through the, and now forwards. a big cluster of zombies there right in the middle uh -huh. <laughs> how realistic is what they're doing compared to how norm, to, to how real diseases spread um, well, obviously, for real diseases, it's not quite so frightening as what's happening up here. <laughs> but we use similar type of methods using chance to pass on infection to understand how real diseases spread around. But for zombie infections, nobody ever recovers. Nobody, okay. And that's, in the real world, people usually recover. I think there are, in fact... Okay, so if you... <laughs> it's still going. It is still okay. going. Um, if you are... Uh, not a zombie, could you stand up for us? How many people are there? Oh, we've got Just a, 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 three people who managed to escape the zombie battles. <laughs> <laughs> you also can't target people directly with your zombie germs. That wasn't part of the no, rules. Wasn't. Okay, um, everybody sit down. Thank you very much. Well done. Um, now, we can do this again, mm -hmm. but this time we can use some kind of zombie defences. Exactly, yeah. So over here, there's going to be some protection against infection. And these people are going to be completely protected. OK, so those of you who have, you've got protective masks under your seat. And this makes you completely immune from zombie infections. It does, yep. OK, so if the, the zombie germs touch you and you're wearing a face mask, uh, you're wearing a protective mask, don't worry about anything. Don't put up your, don't put up your zombie mask. Don't throw any germs around. Um, you're, you're, you're completely immune. And we'll see, how, we'll see what happens now. And what's your prediction about what will happen in this case? Well, there's a lot of protection up here. So I think the epidemic will be over very quickly. And maybe not many people will be infected. OK, let's give it a go. Here we go. <laughs> OK. So it still started. We've got a few. Oh. Oh. OK. I mean, that basically, that stopped almost immediately. OK, so those of you who are not wearing a protective mask but are also not a zombie, could you stand up? Oh, goodness me, look at that. Wow, it's a lot. And there's a point to it. Thank you very much, Owen. You can sit down. There's a point to all of this, mm. right? Yeah, exactly. So the protection that we had in the population from the people wearing masks who are vaccinated against infection has protected everybody in this part of the audience from getting infection. And is this the same thing that happens when we're vaccinated against diseases? Exactly, it is. So we have here um, kind of this community has immunity from infection. And so even the people who weren't themselves vaccinated have been protected by the protection in the whole community. So how much does the maths of, of modelling disease make a difference back in the real world? Mm. So we, we take experiments kind of like this, but in the computer, and take things that we know about how infection spreads and about the population in general, and the goal is to use the computers, use our simulations, to figure out ahead of time what would be the best interventions. What should we do to decrease the number of cases in everybody? 
without it having to happen. So it doesn't matter whether you're talking about flus or Ebola or I know, TB in cows, you exactly. can use these mathematical ideas. Yeah, for human diseases, for animal diseases, even for plants, it's really useful. And demonstrates that vaccines really do make a difference. It does, I d it does. Would you rather live over here with all these zombies or over here? Definitely over Definitely there. over here. Roz, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.